Everybody, welcome back to a new and exciting episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition ish. Well, it's not really. I mean, we've we listen, we have an amazing guest today. Our guest is Savannah Chrisley, who is uh on Special Forces with me. And so, you know, naturally, I was like, hey, she's in town to promote Special Forces. I was like, come on my show. I thought we were just going to have like a normal chat. Obviously, Savannah has been, you know, involved or well, her life's been crazy lately. Her parents recently were incarcerated and she is taking care of her younger siblings. It's really crazy. So I thought we'd have a really interesting conversation with Savannah. Also, by the way, many of you are probably like, where the fuck is Tyler Cameron? I thought Tyler Cameron was this week for going deeper. Well, r- fear not. Tyler Cameron will be here on Tuesday on Reality Recap. He was great. You're going to love him. You're going to want to listen to that episode. But this is all to say the reason why we had to move things around and the reason why we're dropping this episode today, which is going to sound more like a reality recap episode-ish. I don't know. This is all to say we just don't have a texting office hour. And you're normally used to that on going deeper. Because Savannah just like dropped some information that blew our minds. And I believe we are breaking this news. So we wanted to make sure we broke it rather than wait till Tuesday because it was too juicy and too good not to. So here we are, and you're welcome. I don't want to spoil too much, but maybe maybe you kind of already know or suspect. We kind of gave it away in the promo a bit, and we'll give it away a little bit more. But to how it all unfolds, you're just going to have to listen. It's so wild. I can't believe it. <laughs> We we like thought the episode was over. We thought it was like a wrap up question. Yeah, and then... no, I was like, hey, you fucking anyone recently? <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Uh, anyway, so we had to move things around. I hope you feel like it was worth uh, your while. <sighs> it was really, really something. I really enjoyed interviewing Savannah. A very giving guest. A giving, giving oh, guest. Yeah. Very generous. Yeah. She is a saint. She she gives. No one can ever accuse Savannah of not being a giver. People have accused her parents of being takers. But that's her parents. And that's between the United States government and her parents. But Savannah Chrisley is a giver. And she gave to us and to all of you, really. So um, I'll stop being cryptic. What else we got before we get to Savannah? Okay, so a story that I was not even super aware of until you brought it up, Nick, because of your Auburn connections, mm. was the yes. ongoing story yeah. of the Shivers. Of this, is it Shiver or Shiver? It is, Shiver. as we now know, the <laughs> Shivers. They are college sweethearts. They both went to Auburn, have kids together, and it's now something that like you a, would hear about the, in a true crime podcast. And it's like national news. Yes. It's been around. We haven't talked about it yet. Nally and I have discussed it, her being from Auburn. And it seems like lately there's a lot of people trying to kill their spouses. And not covering up their tracks. Look up People Magazine. Not the most recent one, but the week before. There was another murder couple. There was another murder couple? Yeah, another wife who tried to... I think she might have actually murdered him. Oh, no. But there's been an uptick. There's been an uptick, and... Which is... Why does he want to murder their husbands? Did she kill him? That's the one. Can we bring it up? So this is a different couple. Uh, Did she kill him? She wrote a... Oh, yeah, this is a different one. This one's nuts, too. She wrote a book about grief after her husband died, and now she's being suspected of murdering him. Fights over money, multiple life insurance policies, an illicit affair inside the shocking case of Corey Richens, who police says poisoned her husband, Eric, with fentanyl spiked cocktail. It wouldn't. Yeah. Like, did they do an autopsy and find fentanyl in his system? Damn. Anyways, he's dead. Um, R.I.P. But uh, you know who's not dead? Robert Shiver. Robert Shiver. And what's that story? And what, who, how... Do we know what the details of that story? Oh, we do. Is So his wife was not covering her tracks very well. A court document obtained by ABC News revealed the shocking text message that Bahamian authorities alleged a Georgia mother of three sent in a plot to kill her estranged husband while on vacation. 
So they're on vacation with their three children in the Bahamas. She thinks perfect time to kill him. The text just said kill him. And it's a WhatsApp message. Authorities say that 36 year old Lindsay Shiver admitted in a police interrogation to sending to an alleged hitman, along with photos of her husband, Robert, who police said became fearful for his life and the lives of his children. So photos of her husband sent to this hitman. Kill him. Detectives alerted How do you the find f- a hitman. The dark not web. asking for myself. The dark web. The dark web. Yeah. Can we all look to Derek? But it's mostly scams. So yeah, don't do it. it's mostly FBI people honeypotting. Yep. Uh, oh, how smart. Detectives alerted the former Auburn University football player to that alleged murder plot only after Lindsay's alleged lover, Terrence Bethel, became a suspect in an unrelated burglary and his phone was obtained in a search warrant. So if it hadn't been for her alleged lover being caught in a different crime, and then his phone. He's just like a. And then she had texted him. What did she text him? Gonna try and kill my husband. Perhaps. Maybe. You and I can live happily ever after. Yeah, it doesn't say. I imagine. Well, can we bring up? Prosecutors say Ms. they discovered those text messages between Lindsay Bethel and the alleged would-be hitman Farron oh, Newbold Jr. Chat. So they were all talking to the hitman. Wow. What does she look like? And not that I'm condoning this crime, but maybe don't make a group <laughs> chat with. Like, <laughs> like, maybe just like I don't know, like hey dummy, leave a note and burn time. it. I don't, I don't know. Okay, very cute, normal looking couple. She looks like a killer. You can't <laughs> say those things. No, I can because she's literally hiring. I, I mean, I don't know what a killer looks like, but bring up that picture. Do we have a picture of her lover? And maybe even a mugshot. Well, yeah, because of the burglar, Terrence, Terrence Bethel. That's oh, him? he's from the Bahamas? It says Bahamian lover. Is that why they wanted to conduct the murder in the Bahamas? Uh. Perhaps. It just says Lindsay Shiver's Bahamian lover, Terrence Bethel, breaks silence, insisting that the texts to the hitman were said out of frustration. Oh, so you didn't mean it? Well, I mean. You were venting to the hitman? It's possible. Prosecutors will have to prove the three were engaged in a credible plot and not just sounding off. If they're. What is he, why is there a picture of Bethel sitting in the woods contemplating life? It looks like a photo shoot. Where do they get this shot? It doesn't look natural. Oh, he's Who's been the all guy? over the woods. Who's the other guy? Look at it. He's running around. Yeah, well, scroll down. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Who's that? Is that the would-be assassin? Yeah. The would-be hitman. Theron Newbold, the accused would-be hitman, broke cover over the weekend after his release. He exchanged a few words with DailyMail.com. <laughs> Oh, my God. Uh, DailyMail.com. He wants a judge in Georgia to order him custody of the three young boys in ownership of the 2.5 million marital home. Damn. So she's been jetting back and forth from Georgia to the Bahamas to see her lover. She has. So she's been cheating on. Yeah, which is probably why he wants the custody and the $2.5 million home. And then she and her lover involve the hitman to kill him. But now they say they were just venting and they didn't mean it. Ooh. Drama. They were together 13 years. They have three children. Wow. Wow. So that's a story. What a story. Well, more on that later. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Tom Sandoval sent a public birthday message to his friend, quote, quote friend, mm-hmm. uh, Raquel Levis, six months after their scandalous love affair dubbed Scandival resulted in a media storm. A happy birthday, Rachel. I hope you're finding peace and happiness. Miss you, friend. The Vanderpump Rules star wrote in an Instagram comment on his former co-star's Tuesday referring to her by her birth name. But couldn't he just text that? No yeah, one to wants to public. see the comments between you yeah. guys. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Happy birthday, public fine. The I miss you, friend. Yeah, I yeah. really hope you're finding peace and happiness. Miss you, friend. Maybe she changed her number. But clearly he can comment on her post. DM her. Maybe she blocked him. Hmm. Or but no, but he, then he wouldn't be able yeah. to comment. I don't know. I saw Tom last night. How is he? Oh, doing, yeah. Seems doing well. Yeah. The, all, the, uh, the whole cast was together. Was last it night. nice to see each other in a non- It was great. Yeah. It was really rewarding. How was Billy? Billy sends his regards. No, he doesn't. <laughs> don't tease us. Don't say that. Uh, he's looking good. He still smells good. Found out. Tyler, actually, Tyler Cameron just sent me a text of the cologne. 
that <gasps> Billy wears. You found out. I did. Wow. What a generous king. I don't, I feel like I can't, I just should, maybe I shouldn't give it away. Probably not. Yeah. But you should buy it. It comes in a very sexy bottle. I can't oh. really see that. Yeah, some people are really secretive about their scent. Yeah, I've seen like interviews that, where people ask, and they're like, "I won't, I won't say, yeah. censor it." I don't want to. I don't want to out Billy like that. If Billy wants to come on and and share, oh my god, he does want to come on. Oh my god, we are gonna have Billy on if he can get back to LA. <laughs> oh, Billy, where does he live full time? Uh, I know he has a place in Florida and the UK. Oh, successful king. He gets around. Oh yeah. my gosh, America's largest. So what else is going on? What's going on with Taylor Swift, VMAs? Did she do well? She did well. She swept. She did. Breaking but records. I think what's even bigger news I is agree. that she's reportedly <laughs> hanging out with Travis Kelsey. I saw that. Do you remember when he failed Tried to at shoot a giving shot. his yeah. number? Apparently, sources say that they've been, hang- they've been quietly hanging out. She saw him when she was in New York City a few weeks ago. And I remember you said if Taylor wanted to see him, he'd have gotten through. He got through. Or no, but I don't oh. think he did get through. Not there, but mean? here. Yeah, yeah. Well, that night, remember he tried to shoot a shot and we were like, is this real? And you were like, it's Taylor Swift. If she wanted Travis to like get through security, she would have made that happen. But maybe she didn't know he was coming. Maybe she wasn't interested in him at the time, but then she saw all the headlines and she thought to herself, He's Why a not? hottie. Bit of a fuck boy, for sure. But if anyone she... could get him to change his ways. Well, no, no, no. no. I don't. Well, first of all, I don't know if that's true. Clearly, Taylor Swift knows what's best for Taylor Swift because life has gone swimmingly for her. Been a good year for her. Been a good year. Unfortunately, though, this rumor does contradict the rumors that she and Joe got back together. It does. Mm. Which makes me sad. Why, why? What loyalty do you have to Joe? I don't know. I loved what, him. What do we love about him? We just loved how he made her feel. How do we know how he made her feel? Because we've watched Countless Miss Americana. Songs. Yeah, feelings change. Well, we could report on it if we got the gig as the Taylor Swift reporter. Also, Ugh. didn't we hear that part of the reason why they broke up was because Joe felt insecure about the amount of success that is Taylor Swift? Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know Travis Kelsey, personally, but he comes across as an ultra-confident man, Super Bowl champion, arguably one of the greatest tight ends in the history of the NFL. Really? Yeah. Okay, very good, well. Very good football player. I don't know him, but he comes across as a guy who's got his own thing going on and and wouldn't be intimidated by Taylor's success. Now, that doesn't mean that they would be compatible in other areas, but if that was something that was a drawback for her, I could I could see her him being a draw. And Travis's brother, also a really good football player, is a happily married man and a father. Oh. So, well, maybe Travis Kelsey is in his fuckboard era now. Maybe, you know, he's looking to emulate his brother's path. Maybe similar to Tyler Cameron. The switch has flipped. The f- switch has flipped. A little preview for next week. Yeah. Well, there's apparently a new job that we could all apply to, which is a Taylor Swift reporter. I saw this posted this morning. Um, My dad sent it to me. There, <laughs> Genevieve sent it to me. So I guess we're going head for head. <laughs> Is this like you guys quitting? Well, I don't know if we'll get the job. Nick, like if I don't What's know if I'll job? apply a newspaper, Gannett. Apparently it's the largest newspaper chain in the United States. Yeah, I saw it posted from like USA Today. Yeah, the New York Times posting about it. Yeah. They're hiring a reporter <sighs> to only cover Taylor Swift. This outlet. U- yes. This says USA Today is hiring. Swift's fan base has grown to unprecedented heights, and so has the significance of her music and growing legacy. We are looking for an energetic writer, photographer, and social media pro who can quench an undeniable thirst for all things Taylor Swift with a steady stream of content across multiple platforms. Goodbye. You think goodbye to me? Yeah. Sounds like us. (laughs) Can we do it together? Mm. Oh. Why? I don't know. But it did say we uh, has to travel extensively. So are we going on tour? Oh, oh my <laughs> God. I mean, maybe if it's the USA Today as hiring someone to only cover Taylor Swift, I would imagine that they would try to get that person as much access to Taylor Swift as possible. I'll submit my Raven Ross sizzle reel as my <laughs> previous work. <laughs> I feel like well, we have to apply. We, just we'd to be see. dumb not to. We would be dumb it not to. It does say you need five years of journalistic experience. Yeah. Do you think this counts? <laughs> no. There's very Aren't specific Aren't we journalists? Stand. 
No, I used so in middle school, I was editor in chief of my middle school newspaper. <laughs> oh wow! And there's a lot of integrity and very specific circumstances. I don't think you're gonna get the job. Sorry. Why? But we've got to shoot our shot. So much. We've just got to shoot it. Apply. Yeah. Why don't you think we would get it? You don't have a journalist's degree. If they asked I you have to write a, a degree from Northwestern for School of Journalism, a recommendation. Yeah. Would you? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could. I could see how it could benefit me to have you get this job. <laughs> oh, so for. <laughs> yeah, I give a fuck about. Doesn't matter your about our yeah. our trajectory. No. Okay. No, no. If it if it benefits me, then great. Okay, got it, got it, got yeah. it. Okay, yeah. we can make that happen. All right. Well, yeah. but I could see, of course, yeah, a mutual beneficial relationship. For sure. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. We yeah. do it for you. Although, like, <laughs> I I would imagine that Us Weekly would want the tea before you would give it to me. USA Today. Whatever the fuck. Hey, don't be insulting our future boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to listen to this and that's why we won't get the job. Uh, all right. Well, good luck. Thank you. Uh, so Elon Musk's dad impregnated his stepsister or something. Holy shit. What? But also Elon Musk wants people to procreate, but he only wants smart people. Yes. He I wants kind of agree. He wants the birth rate to increase globally, but he believes only people of a certain level of intelligence should reproduce. I mean, I don't think they should actually implement this because that's insane. But I I don't disagree with them. You know, my biggest takeaway of going on The Bachelor was mm. realizing just how stupid most people are. Ugh. I mean, the world is full <laughs> of idiots. <laughs> Us? Yeah. Well, I just because I just remember people <laughs> telling me how smart I was, and I'm like, I I can assure you <laughs> that while me? I'm not the dumbest person, <laughs> I'm not as smart as you're making me out to be. That's wow. true. And then getting you know a public persona and just kind of getting connected with the world. But there's just a lot of dum dums out there, and these dum dums are making decisions about our future. And <laughs> as scary yeah. as it. It's, it's crazy. You know, it's like weird because I do believe everyone should have the right to participate in society, except that there's more dum-dums than smart people. And when the dum-dums are running the asylum, ugh. but at the same time, I don't know. I don't think we should implement it. I don't think we should ever do it, but <laughs> I wish we could. Mm. I don't know. I wish the world was less dumb. I am, I'm terrified by how stupid we are as a society and we're only getting dumber. That's true. Because we are shoving screens into our faces and we're getting our information from 15 second TikTok clips from Jan Fuck from Jan. West Virginia Come on. Ugh. or Minnesota or Arizona. Excuse me. Keep my state out of your mouth. It's just, there's stupid people everywhere. Okay. You don't think so? I don't know. But not, not anyone who's listening to this show. Definitely. True. God, not you guys. True. You're all geniuses. That's a good test. That's the test. That is a test. They listen to this show. We're too intellectual for any, any dumb dumb to be entertained by our show. I'm talking about common fucking sense. Most people lack it. Asking questions. Yeah. Not everyone can be like Jenny anyway. and I, the journalists of the room. <laughs> Jax and Schwartz in heated debate during VPR filming. What, ja is Jax on VPR? It's unclear whether they're like yelling at each other or whether it's like loud. They look spirited, but clearly it's new clearly because cameras it's the too. bleached hair. It's the bleached tongue. Yeah, and you can see the cameramen. I think they're just leaning in because they can't hear each other. Yeah, yeah. But exciting that he's there. Is it though? Is it exciting that he's there, Jax? Yeah. Why is this exciting? I'm already dreading on our Vanderpump recap when he leaves the show. Ugh, dreading. Why? But Ariana's I love joining. Him. He's funny. He he's does a horrible he human being. But he he's gives us good hilarious. TV. He's so silly. <laughs> From an entertainment <laughs> perspective, yeah, no. we're not saying he's like the epitome uh, of a great person. I don't want Stassi to leave either. I don't find. I don't know. I get rewrite it, history, Vanderpump. But his shtick is so old. I feel like not two seasons in. I think he just need a new shtick. Maybe he has one. Maybe he's. We're You're telling me it right it's not here. entertaining the scene of him sweeping Stassi's floor, and she goes, "Well, if you didn't do stupid things, you wouldn't be sweeping the floor." Is that on an episode I, don't I haven't watched? Yes, that? yes. Is that season two? Yes. Little oh, by the way, we're recapping episode 
<laughs> and we're on season two. Allie's a bit ahead of me, so. File Files Plus, everybody. We're recapping Vanderpump. We're on season two right now. Jax is just one of those people who's only done shitty things to people. And, and, you know, to his credit, he's made a living off of it. But I don't know what a single redeeming character that he has. Well, speaking of fights, Kardashians are also fighting in their upcoming uh, Kardashians trailer. And I don't know how everybody else feels, but when I had more of a, a finger on the pulse of the Kardashian world, I feel like people are getting a little tired of their Hulu show. It felt like season two was not nearly as like impactful as season one. But in this upcoming trailer, uh, Courtney calls Kim a witch. And so Kim said, are you happy? Uh, you're a different person. You hate us. We all think about it. You think things so you get riled up. The argument doesn't end there. Courtney shares her true feelings. You're a witch and I hate you. It's giving old Kardashians. You think they've heard the public outcry and decided to fake more drama? Yes. Okay. Yes. She so. stole my wedding country. <laughs> they're producers on the show. Mm -hmm. You know, like either everything is going to paint them in a good light or everything is going to be there because like everything is there because they want it to be there. Yeah. So it's either like serving a purpose of it makes them look good or it's serving a purpose of like, we know that this is going to get good numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to say, as someone who's uh, been around the block, it's really impressive what the Kardashians have accomplished from a, you know, just being on TV as long as they have. And you don't do that without making good television and be willing to, you know, respond to the critics, I suppose. Yeah. Did you watch the American Horror Story trailer? No. With her in it. It's silly. She says, do you want an Oscar? Do you want it more than a baby? Like, what? I'm so confused what this I did is see, about. I did see uh, some people were posting videos of kind of like the celebrity box at the U.S. Open or where a bunch of celebrities were sitting. And Kylie Jenner and Timothy Chalamet are at the back of the box. And someone commented and they were like, why does Timothy look like Kylie before filler? <gasps> Ouch. Why are they, they look like spies? <laughs> kind of do. I, I saw a tweet glass. that was like, do you think Kylie's greyhounds think Timothy is their father? <laughs> <laughs> also, Laverne Cox. What a look. Don't Love that. mean. Speaking of mean, Amy Schumer accused of cyberbullying Nicole Kidman with a now deleted US Open post. What did she say? I thought it was kind of funny. Well. What she said. You're kind um, of a bully. I think Amy Schumer is misunderstood. I think people are really harsh on her. Yeah, probably. What did she say, though? She was commenting on Nicole Kidman's posture. <laughs> posture and sitting. Yeah, like that. And she so captioned this it, this how humans sit. To mean, like, she looks a little robotic. I mean, listen, I don't know. Like, Amy is a public figure commenting on another public figure. I don't know. She just said, this is how, this how humans sit, huh? This how humans sit. <laughs> I mean, if like I love Nicole Kidman, if she was offended or upset, like maybe she reached out to Amy and was like, you know, that that actually like hurt my feelings. Would you mind deleting it? Like totally. Maybe. Well, here, this is, here's the thing. We on this show comment on pop culture and other people like this. And it's just like one of those things where if I'm going to share my opinion, I, I, I understand that people are going to get upset or react to it and have commentary and their fans are going to have a certain feeling a certain way about it. And that's just kind of par for the course. So I don't feel like Amy's misunderstood. I think she is a someone who is willing to make commentary on other public figures with fans. And what does she expect? Everyone to laugh at her joke? Some people probably did. A lot of people thought it was hilarious. You're being one of them. I thought it's very funny, funny too. And I don't think it's that big of a deal. But, just, but you don't get to comment on other people without upsetting some people. It's just surprising because she's so like she's, you know, established. She's so many years into her like very successful career, no matter like whether you like her or not. She's very successful. And she said a lot of things that have made people very angry. So it just surprised me like this late into her career, her deleting the post. I would I was surprised that she wasn't just like I didn't mean it as offense, guys. I, I meant it like. To be funny. My guess is she just was like, you know what? I don't need the headache and I'm just going to delete it. It's still a headache though. Like they're, you know, no, it's still it a headache, nothing. but it shows at least some like, you know, it is a fine line. I don't think Amy wants to hurt anyone's feelings. We on this show never want to hurt anyone's feelings. We try to be fair. We try to say things like on, on Bachelor Recaps, things like, hey, we don't know these people. It's an edited fucking TV show. We're just critiquing their behaviors. You know, we say that every fucking season and almost every fucking episode, but without fail. We are fully aware of how upset we make some of the 
contestants on The Bachelor by our commentary. And I don't love that, that we hurt their feelings at times. We're certainly not trying to, but I can't predict the feelings of everyone out there. Other people we comment on are like, yeah, that was really fair. You know, whatever. I didn't take it personally. Like, you don't know me, you know. Other people have different reactions to it. And I think on a case-by-case basis, Amy's just, you know, there are times where I was like, I don't want to fuck it. I don't want the headache. Just cut that out. I don't want to deal with that. Just cut that out. And Amy was just probably like, you know what? I don't, I don't want to die on this hill of like Nicole Kidman's fan base. So like, fuck it. I'm just going to delete it. That to me shows a little bit of regret without having to do the whole like, I don't think Amy needs to like post something and be like, I just want to, you know, apologize for the insensitivity of robots. Uh, and Nicole that would Kidman. be kind of funny that though kind of she funny. like posted a joke about um, we come to this sorry, place I'm sorry to if apologize I, I'm sorry if I offended any funny. future robots to, to all the AI that's going to exist in this world yeah I don't think it's that big of a deal but I also don't think that Amy's a victim and you know if she's going to com- make commentary and jokes about other people she must know that some people those people might find it offensive and their fans might find it offensive and they're going to react you know, and we live in a world where we're just lazy and we like to use buzzwords like bullying and gaslighting for the most trivial of things. Whatever. All right. I think it's maybe time to get to Savannah. We have a jam packed episode with Savannah. I hope you really enjoy it. It was a wild episode. Tell your friends. Thanks for supporting the show. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at com for all things Ask Nick, texting office hours. I know it's going deeper, but we don't have a texting office hours today because Savannah was just so giving. But reality recap next week with Tyler Cameron, a great episode. And we do have a texting office hours on that episode. So we're moving things all around a little bit, but just for your benefit and for ours. Savannah Chrisley, everybody. Well, I'll tell you what, we have a lot of friends of show, a lot of people we like to talk to you about, but Brooke Lennon has been with this show from the get, and there is a big reason why. I love supporting great companies with great products and more importantly, products that I love to use, and there is no company that I love to use more than Brooke Lennon. They are kicking butt when it comes to the sheets department, the bedding, towels, hand towels, their loungewear, incredibly soft. You've heard me talk about Brooklyn for years, and it's because they have so many great products, such high quality products. I often refer to Brooklyn as the eighth wonder of the world because every time I put their products on my skin, my body, I feel soft, I feel soothed, I feel cared for. And the best part is I'm not spending an arm and a leg to get these high quality amazing products. Brooklinen's internet famous sheets have over 100,000 five-star reviews and counting. So if you are looking for a serious upgrade to your home, you got to grab a bed and bath bundle for a good night's rest in a new at-home spa routine. You can save up to 25% off when bundling your new favorite home essentials. All their stuff is amazing. You got to check it out, whether it's bedding, whether it's towels, whether it's robes, whether duvet covers, loungewear, and more. You can save even more when you bundle some of their wonderful products. Experience the difference for yourself check out Brooklyn's all new fall collection. Visit in-store or online at brooklyn.com and use code V-I-A-L-L for $20 off your online order of $100 or more. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code V-I-A-L-L for $20 off. Again, brooklyn.com. Promo code V-I-A-L-L for $20 off. Sometimes you get sweaty. We get sweaty a lot, especially in the summertime or if you're like on the go. And it's not just your armpits that are the places that are sweaty. But even if it's armpits or other sensitive areas of your body, you want to ensure that the products you're putting there are good for you. And I always like to trust people who know what they're doing. So Lumi's founder, Dr. Shannon Klingman, is an OBGYN, and she met thousands of women concerned with odor below the belt. Uh, Through clinical testing, she discovered it wasn't the Mm -hmm, to blame, but bacteria on the skin. So she created Lumi, which is a pH-optimized aluminum-free deodorant that actually works and works everywhere with over 150,000 five-star reviews to prove it. So I would recommend starting with the starter pack because you get multiple products and then you can really just try out the full line of Lumi, see what you like best. You can pick out your scent, which is great. I love their deodorant wipes because I can keep them in my purse. I can keep them in my car. Whenever you need one, they're right there. And new customers now get $5 off Lumi Starter Pack. Lumi Starter Pack is a perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping as a special offer for listeners. New customers get $5 off a Lumi Starter Pack with code V-I-A-L-L at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com. 
and use code V-I-A-L-L. LumiDeodorant.com, code V-I-A-L-L. Savannah, welcome. Thank you. How's it going? How's your heart? My heart's great. Your heart's great. It's thriving. How are you then? Good. Awesome. I have a bone to pick with you. Though. Oh, what did I do? I am here doing your podcast and you turned down doing mine. When? You did. They were like, yeah, Nick said he's going to have to ass. And I was like, did oh. I, did I pass? First of okay. all, I just want you to know, I'm sure you can appreciate that being the star that you are. That sometimes not every request crosses your table. Well, I'll, I'll take it up with my team. Okay. Well, when you're in Nashville next. I'll do your podcast. Okay, fine. Yeah. I forgive you. When did, I, when, did, when did I allegedly say no? <laughs> it was like probably like right before going on the show. And Be- then right before? I, yes. And then when I found out you were on the show, I was like, this son of a bitch. Ugh. I actually found it really funny. They Does my like, team think you're bad news? I'm great news. <laughs> I have great ratings, okay? No, I'm down. Is it, do you only do it in person or do you do it remote? I mean, I like in person because, you know, it's more I, personal. I couldn't agree more, yeah. It's, yeah, it's but weird. we'll figure it out. We heard it here. I'll do your show. Thank you. I'll I like talk the to commitment. My team. I don't know why they said no to you. Did I, I ask them? You should ask them. Do you them. want some feedback? I want some feedback. And maybe my parents <laughs> going to prison or maybe, who knows? But like, I want some feedback. <laughs> yeah, maybe they didn't want me to call like Jailbird Nick or something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I did a podcast with John Christ. So he's like a big time comedian. And he did my podcast and we're talking and he's like beating around the bush. And I was like, so do you like get good content from like just shitty life experiences? He was like, oh, yeah. I was like, so like my parents going to prison. We can make great content about that. And he starts dying laughing. He was like, thank God you cleared the air on that one because now I've got some good jokes. So you've been, I guess, approaching this, what I'm assuming is a challenging situation with uh, some lightheartedness. 100%. That's the only way to get through life. That's the only way you can do it. I love your tattoos, by the way. Did you have those on the show? I did. Yeah. But we were covered up because it was fucking cold. The only person I saw uncovered was Tyler. He and I went and showered together. Well, not like together. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a headline. <laughs> Clip that. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, you know, you had to have partners to go shower. Yeah, no, I and know. And Tyler was my partner. And I remember like he's showering and I like try to be respectful and turn my back. But like every few seconds, I was like, well, okay. Bye. <laughs> he is hot. He's super Dude, hot. He will be. He's like a specimen. Yeah, he's he is a specimen. He's a specimen. Yeah. But really, how, how have you been doing? Like, what's, what's Savannah's world like these days? It's got to be nuts. So I have my 10-year-old sister and 17-year-old brother, like, full time. You're playing mom and dad. Yeah. Full mom and dad, like, 24-7. So what is a day in the life uh, like for Savannah Chris? <laughs> it's getting up at, like, I don't know, 5.30, getting school uniforms ready, making breakfast, School drop off, coming home, getting ready, podcasting, social media content. We're in the midst of filming a new show, real estate in Nashville. And then I do school pickup at three o'clock. Do you have to make sure they do their homework? Okay, so I'm not really like a homework type of parent. Gotcha. I'm just like, okay, do that at school or like figure it out when you get home. How do you think they're handling this experience? At first, it was definitely an adjustment, you know, because your whole life is uprooted. But at the same time, kids are so resilient that they turn it into humor. Like they figure it out. Grayson went to like a baseball tournament in Florida and he's in a car with like his friends his teammate and his parents and he was like hey guys guess what and the parents were like what is it gray he was like huh my dad lives here full time wow so a sense of humor all the way around everyone started dying laughing and they were like i shouldn't be laughing but like you you know you have to find humor in the darkest of situations if you want to get through life that's that's true what has been the hardest part though definitely all the first is what I say. Like, what? like first birthdays, first holidays, sure. first just major life experiences that mom and dad would be there for that they're just not there for. I mean, I remember going to the doctor the first time after my parents left because like even at 26 years old, if my mom knew I had a doctor's appointment, like she would be there. Like it could be a checkup and she's like, no, like I'm going to show up. And even just little things like that, you don't realize how hard it hits until someone's not there. And then you start freaking out. 
Yeah, I can only imagine. Have you ever had moments throughout this process where, you know, you put on a good face, obviously you're able to crack some jokes, you're picking up the kids, taking them to school, et cetera, et cetera. But have you ever had a moment where you just kind of like broke down? Oh, 100%. It wasn't long after my parents left and like I had moved the kids into my house. Obviously, I had already had their rooms done, everything. And I'm trying to figure out proper clothes for them to wear. And I just like break down, like literally in the floor and I'm like crying and I'm like, I am not half the woman that my mother is. Like, I don't know how she does it. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, I need some sort of like godly help to get through this. And what'd you do? I mean, I cried and then I picked myself up and I was like, all right, let's find these kids clothes because you have no other choice. Like you have your breakdown then you're like, all right, now I have to get up and I have to keep moving forward. How often do you get to talk to mom and dad? Oh, like I would say at least twice a day. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you talked to them today? Yeah. Who'd you talk to? (laughs) I talked to mom and dad. What did you, what did you guys talk about? Well, I mean, it's kind of like the same shit every day, but it's also I, I mean, I don't them. know. I have never talked to someone in prison before, so I that's got to be a wild ride. Do yeah. they call you collect? Like, hey, Bob, it's a baby. Yeah, a baby, asshole, it's a boy. they do. Like, do they? Yeah, do, asshole. Do you call them back? No, there's no calling back. It's just like, hi, this call is from a federal prison. Click five to accept the call or seven to block the call. Whatever. And then what do you guys talk about? Like, whatever we have going on, what my plans are for the day, the BS that's going on there, the kids checking on them. Do your parents vent to you at all, or do you sense that they are putting on a good face for you? They definitely put on a good face, but also in the midst of all of this, I've taken it as an opportunity to like make a difference, be outspoken, because I have a platform Mm -hmm. that can speak for people who may not be able to speak for themselves. So there's a little bit of venting, but for the most part, it's like, all right, we're going to put on a good face and we're going to save the venting for like in person. I mean, have you heard any crazy stories from either of your parents? I mean, oh, 100%. Like they're in fucking federal prison. Yeah. And if you watch any. I can tr- it's, it's obviously scary. People don't really realize because people think like where they're at, it's like Camp Cupcake. Let's go just, you know, bunk around and fucking enjoy like. I don't know. Food. Where are, are they? Are Dad's they... in Florida okay. in Pensacola. Mom's in Lexington, and Kentucky. What kind of prison systems are they considered? I mean, it's considered like a camp, like the lowest possible that you can be in. in terms so it's like so adult babysitting. Who are they in prison with? Is it other like. So, non-violent criminals? It's non-violent offenders. Like where dad's at, there's the varsity bullies guy that was with, that was a whole ringleader of like uh, Lori Laughlin's thing, college admission oh. scandal guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, and yeah, he like yeah. camped down and was like, hey, like, you know, ta- told dad he was writing a book and dad was like, make sure you don't leave out the chapter where he snitched on everyone because he got a deal for snitching on people. Like, he's in there. So there's some high profile, like, lawyers, doctors, all these different people. But also, too, there's, like, major drug lords where dad's at, too, that made their way down from a maximum security prison, like, down to a camp. Have they made any friends? Oh, hell yeah. Dad's, like, he likes to joke because, like, even at visitation, like, I meet so many different people. It's hilarious. Like, I'm through visitation. They come through and they're, like, clapping his hands. Like, they're, like, he's, like... The president of this place. Your parents were recently granted, it seems like some good news, a reduced sentence a little bit. So that is, it's the first step back. I mean, history, Republicans are known for hating prison reform, like throw them in, throw away the key, whatever. But then under the last administration, the first step act was granted, which it just gives prisoners an opportunity to take classes, reduce their sentences, and enter back into society in a, like, a safer manner. So that's what that was about. It was two years for dad and like 18 months for mom that was taken off their sentence. But obviously, we have an open appeal that we're fighting and going after. There's been some reform stuff to come down the pipeline that goes into effect in February, which could take two points off of each of them. So there's a bunch of different avenues we're pursuing. Wow. And now I know when we were filming Special Forces, you were very obviously open and gracious. We bonded a lot. Just the group. It was great. It, conver- it, yeah. it, we had like other than like a person here or there, like we had a great group of people that we all like. We'll, just we'll get had to who you, who, who you didn't think it was so great in a moment. <laughs> no, in a moment. But we're you were going to agree on that one. Well, you know, just let's get to it. This is your interview. You know, that's not oh, mine. yeah. But you were very generous, obviously, talking about this whole ordeal. And while we were filming, it sounded like you, you know felt frustrated about 
the justice system mm -hmm. and it sounded like you felt like your parents were wrongfully imprisoned. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a list here of accusations and, and charges against them, but I guess for the people listening, like where do you feel like they got misrepresented or how do you feel about the fact that they are accused of doing all these different types Bank fraud, of, of tax things. fraud, conspiracy to fraud the yeah, United lot, States government, yeah. all these different charges. My issue is, is that we're not paying enough attention to government overreach. And when you look at our case, it first started off as a state case. And the state was investigating them for tax fraud. They were trying to say there was, what, a million, two million dollars owed. Granted, it settled for $60,000. So if you owe a million dollars, who's going to settle for 60? It was all lies from the very beginning. But then it all happened to do because they were on they were on television. And so you look at the press conferences after trial and they state if these people that are on national television can't get away with it, neither can you. So that went to show what their motives sure. were from the beginning. But also you had a Georgia Department of Revenue agent that illegally seized a warehouse, went in with a search warrant, waved it up in the air, told the owner of the warehouse, if you don't grant me access, I will arrest you. The search warrant was never signed off on by a judge. So they had no legal grounds to access a warehouse that they supposedly got all of this evidence from. So you have no way to know, was this evidence tampered with? Was it actual evidence? Where did it come from? So there were all of these mistakes from the very beginning. And then when you go to trial and you're accusing people of bank fraud and you don't show one single bank loan, that's an issue. You just show an Excel spreadsheet that the government created. So where are the actual loan documents? Anyone who's gotten a car loan, house loan, there's loan documents that you've signed. So why would the government not put that up on the screen? That's an issue. An IRS agent that lies on the stand that says money was owed that actually was not. How do you and know they lied? She admitted it after trial. Our current CPAs contacted her and said, if they owe money, I need to know so I can get it taken care of. And she said, what I said actually wasn't true. They don't owe anything. Was that documented? Somewhere? Yes, that is documented. And it's documented in the appeal, which is what we filed. So that is a major error. And when the government was confronted with it, their exact response was it was a harmless error. But when we interviewed our private investigators, interviewed jurors, they stated that if they would have known what the IRS agent said was not accurate, that would have changed their whole viewpoint. So my thing is, is when you have so many different questions, how can you put two individuals away for a combined 19 years? That's an issue. To me, the government overreach is just beyond what I've seen. When you're sitting there in court, and I will never forget at the sentencing hearing, the government was asking for life for my dad. Life. And it's in the court transcripts to where the government asked for life. Now, you have an alleged financial crime and you're asking for life, but Joe Blow next door who raped a woman gets out in three years or gets 180 days was the latest case that I've seen. That's an issue. Yeah, it sounds obviously like, and I get why you're frustrated, but I just want to ask the obvious question. What are the chances? I mean, because they're your parents. Yeah. Like, you love them, your family. What are the chances you think that you might be guilty of bias? Like, is there, have you ever thought about that? You know, I mean, For it's your sure. mom and dad. I mean, hell, you'd want to believe family. Have you had those conversations with yourself? What if it's true? You know, what if it, I mean, not to compare your mm -hmm. parents at all, but like recently in the news, I'm sure you're aware that like uh, Aston Kutcher and Mila Kunis have made headlines supporting their yes. their friend Danny Masterson who did these horrible crimes and it's like you understand you know wanting to like have your friends back and believe in your friends and certainly family and these are your parents yeah. so even I, I can only imagine even more difficult if someone in your position but yeah like what conversations do you have with yourselves to to make sure that you're just not blindly defending mom and dad I will always stand for what's right, regardless of who the person is. And I have sat down and I have seen all these court transcripts. The government gave my dad's former business partner full immunity, not once, but twice. And the second time was because he lied the first time under oath. 
And he sat there and said, I forged their names to documents. I was in their email accounts. I had a desktop in their basement that was recording all of their phone calls. Like I saw it firsthand. Unfortunately, my dad was naive and was in a place to where he was making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and was like, oh, the company's running as planned as what I've built it to be. So I don't have to pay attention to it. Unfortunately, while he had that mindset, he was completely getting railroaded behind the scenes. So I can stand for what's right and what's wrong, regardless of who the person is. And it's like you said, Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, what's happening now? It's so hard for me in this era that we live in of cancel culture of these people. I've always said I go off of my own life experiences with someone, how someone has treated me, how I have seen them treat others. And I truly believe that's what they went after. And they went off their own life experiences. I personally, you talking about Mila or your parents? Yeah, okay. Mila. Like, I look at it in that situation. And it's like, personally, for me, I know Army Hammer and that whole situation that went on. Oh, well, you want to talk about Army? <laughs> Shit, man. Yeah, well, but don't you, but, but Savannah, don't you think that, minus your parents, because I totally get you yeah. having your parents back, but don't you think that in itself is a bit self centered? What do you like explain? To own, ask. I do get frustrated with sometimes with people when I hear things like, well, they didn't do anything to me type of energy for sure because it's not black and white people mm -hmm. aren't evil and good you know and despite us living in a world where we like to label people is in oversimplify as evil and good yep. most people it's shades of gray we can have a bad day and we can be rude mm -hmm. to someone and leave a lasting impression of being a rude asshole and the yep. next day we can be the most delightful selfless nice person to a different person and two different groups of people might have different interactions and it doesn't necessarily mean we're good or bad maybe we just had a bad day etc cetera, etc cetera. but this idea that if if someone is nice to me and good to me then therefore i'm not going to necessarily be willing to hold them accountable for how they might treat others seems a bit self-centered but you should know from being on TV and being on The Bachelor that what someone says is not always the gospel. No, no, I, I, get, I get the whole just because, yeah, I get just because you hear something yes. or you see something, especially on TV. I'm just simply saying that that line of, well, they didn't do anything to me, which is kind of an acknowledgement they have done something to mm -hmm. other people. And that's different than, say, not believing what you've heard yeah. or, or having a different impression. Mm -hmm. That's that's a whole, yeah. like, in your case, obviously, with your parents, you think that they were wrongfully, you know, yeah, accused sure. and convicted. I'm just kind of more talking about the assumption that maybe they are guilty of whatever it is mm -hmm. maybe it's just being rude and just having that well they didn't do anything to me mindset so, and that's why i mean self-centered because it I comes across as like well it, i only see the the world through the lens of myself yeah and that is a it's a it, well, it's by definition kind of for selfish. sure i get what you're saying i think i 10 years ago i would agree with your narrative of Sure, it's being self-centered. You're not listening to how other people feel. Yeah. But now we live in a world to where all you have to do is say one negative thing about a celebrity and you get this mega following and, oh, my God, this person's sure. a piece yeah. of shit. You said this, this and this. And when you look at certain instances, you're like 50 percent of the time these people come out as liars and it's not actually accurate and they wanted a name for themselves. So I think I come from a place. You really of, think it's 50 percent? I truly do believe. We're in an era now to where people say what they need to say in order to make a name for themselves, whether it's true or false. Uh, it definitely happens. It definitely happens. I just happens. don't know if it's 50%. I know. Okay. Now, I'm not defending anyone. Let me just say this when it comes to like sexual abuse and assault. I personally in my life have been through it. I've never spoken about it, but I have been through it. So I am the first to say, I know how you feel to be a victim of this, 100%. That's why I'm so harsh on the truth being told to like the nth degree, because I know how it feels to actually have gone through it. And you look at, again, not saying, trust me, there was some freaky shit said that Army Hammer said. Never one time. How do gonna... you know Army? So he and I... <laughs> connected and like went out to dinner one time but who slid that was <laughs> the extent of it and so no one knows that by the way so but who like, slid i don't know i don't know someone slid someone slid 
And so we went to dinner one time. I feel like it was you. Because if I was you, been like, that sliding motherfucker. I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. And so we went to dinner. But during his documentary, you know, there was a whole documentary that came out. Mm -hmm. And they actually had to go in after the documentary had aired and revise the documentary because they found a photo that one of the women submitted to be false. And that it was a photo that had been circulating on Google forever. So that's where I start bringing up red flags. And I'm like, whoa, for someone that has actually gone through this, this gives me red flags. I I will. I did watch that documentary. And dude, it was some of the shit that was said. I was like, bro, some of the testimony from the victims was hard to watch. I will. A hundred percent. They did interview some guy. It was like in the beginning of the series who claimed he was on the documentary is like a commentator okay. who claimed to have been in an acting class with Army Hammer, which was why he apparently was part of this documentary. And that same guy, uh, I only know who he is because he claimed to have been in an acting class with me um, <laughs> and, and accused me of like, uh, of like using like um, fake tear stuff or something, which I, I don't even know what that is or how to do it. But like, I've never met this guy. <laughs> Okay. And I just thought it was funny because I had heard like someone like it crossed my desk, so yeah. to speak. And then like a couple years later or something, he flashed up. I'm like, why does that fucking guy look familiar? And he's like, I was in an acting class with Army Hammer. I'm like, I know that motherfucker. He said he was so, in an acting class with you. Yeah. No. So he's. So that's the hard part. It's, a, it's like I wasn't there to see anything happen. So it's like I can't speak one way or another. I just go off of my. Own experiences but with I, someone. But I guess to that point, this guy could be acting about being in an acting class with Army Hammer. He yeah. certainly was at, lying when he was one of me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Army didn't do, didn't, isn't guilty of but misbe- also, like acting. This is another thing badly. is like we live in the United States of America. You're a supposedly innocent until proven guilty. Well, not the, in the court of public opinion. Not anymore. in public opinion. And the DA. Here in L.A. chose not to prosecute. So if the district attorney in a time to where they would love to prosecute a celebrity, if what was there needed to be there to prosecute. Again, I'm coming from this in a place that's like very middle of the road of like, I know what it feels like to be a victim of something. So I'm not discrediting anyone if someone felt that way. But also one of the women Went out with my best friend's brother in freaking Dallas and like tried to swindle him in a whole scenario. So it's like the whole thing is just weird. I, I understand what you're saying. It's a tough world because we do need to do a better job of believing victims because 100%. I know so many women who have been victimized by men mm-hmm. and I don't know any of the men who have been held accountable to, mm-hmm. from, from the women I know, friends of mine and people yeah. who are close At the same time, I hear what you're saying, just because we need to do a better job. Like, unfortunately, uh, we just live in a world where everything is weaponized. For sure. Do you think you're going to continue or be an advocate and fight against, I guess, the justice system and the imperfections that exist from going forward? 100%. I mean, I'm in the process of setting up like an organization that speaks about all of these things. And I have emails every single day. I mean, the Bureau of Prisons is a corrupt institution that needs to be held accountable. And the amount of law firms that have contacted me that have said, hey, I'm willing to jump on board with you to make this a bigger thing is insane. Okay. So it's just, I like to say I was tone deaf to it because it didn't affect me. But now that it's affected me, I'm like, whoa, I had no idea that it was this big of a thing and that there was this much mistreatment going on. And now that I see it, I have no other choice but to has that opened it. your eyes to other things going on in this world that has yet to affect you that For sure. made you go, hmm, maybe I should tune into other things that seem to be affecting other people, but I haven't really given a shit yet because it hasn't affected me? 100%. Like what? I think, obviously, the whole prison reform thing is a huge thing. Like, I never thought it would touch my family. I just never, it's one of those things that's so out of left field that you're like, I didn't even know it maybe existed. Like, I just thought this was a very uniform system that did what it should do and it treated people as it should and doesn't happen. 
But I also think when it comes to it, like I look at gay rights and I look at all these different things that, I mean, I'm not gay, like doesn't affect me. But then I'm like, why do we have the right to tell someone they're not allowed to love who they love? Or my mom said it best. She's like, everyone should be able to feel miserable in marriage. Like (laughs) everyone should feel it. That's one of those things. Like, does it affect me? But like, we shouldn't be able to tell someone who they can and cannot marry. I I agree. So, yeah. Sunday, Sunday, Sundays. Well, the good news is you love your dog seven days a week and Sundays is here to help you out. If you love your pet, your furry little canine, well, you want to make sure that they're eating the highest quality products because what they put in their body is a direct result to their overall health and, and their quality of life. Sundays is zero prep, zero mess, and zero stress. The best part is they're so much more affordable than uh, the, some of those other quote-unquote healthy dog foods. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pups, including softer fur, healthier skin, better poop and more energy when they start enjoying Sundays. Sundays is air-dried dog food made from a short list of human-grade ingredients, Sundays contains 90% real meat, 10% vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. In every recipe, you'll find natural digestive aids like pumpkin and ginger, plus disease-fighting antioxidants. Sundays is shelf-stable, lightweight, and easy to travel with if you are on the go. True that, it's very easy to travel with, and since we, have, we travel with Jeff, it makes it super convenient to take Sundays on the road. So if you love your dog, you must start feeding them Sundays so that they have the best quality of life that they could possibly have. And the best part is you can do that without spending an arm and a leg. You can get an additional 35% off your first order. We have worked out a special offer for our dog loving listeners. Get 35% off your first order. Just go to sundaysfordogs.com slash V-I-A-L-L or use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. That's sundaysfordogs.com. S-U-N-D-A-Y-S. F-O-R-D-O-G-S dot com forward slash V-I-A-L-L. Upgrade your pup to Sundays and feel good about the food you feed your dog. Special Forces, why'd you go on? Paycheck was good. Okay. But... <laughs> no. Savannah, I... you didn't do it for the money. That's for, it's not no. how Special Forces works. We no, did it for not. the pride. <laughs> no, but also when it came down to it, like I have two kids that are looking up to me now. And I want to show them that, like, doesn't matter what life throws at you, just because someone else cancels you doesn't mean you have to cancel yourself. Okay. And so that was the biggest reason, like, reasoning for doing the show was showing that, like, hey, I'm not going anywhere. Do you feel canceled? 100%. You do? Yes. Maybe that's why my publicist wouldn't let me do your podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) Feel very canceled, okay? After our show was the highest rated show on USA. We also had the highest ratings on E at one point just on reruns because our show aired on USA like it reran on E and Bravo. And we had some of the highest ratings. Even after being canceled, we were still in like the top 10 on cable television after it announced that like USA had canceled the show. So Did they cancel you just because because of the yeah, just because the legal stuff. But they knew it was going on all along. Which was the thing. Who's doing the new show? So we partnered with Scout Productions, which like they did Queer Eye. They've done all these big okay. shows. They're great. Like one of the best partners. Do we know I've where had. it's going to be? We don't. So we have like meetings coming up, whether it's Netflix, Hulu, CW, A&D. Don't know where it's going to go. Just know, I mean, it's going to go somewhere. Do you think, well, I'll ask the question to you and then I'd ask you to speak for the rest of your family. Okay. Uh, but if you guys could go back and never do TV, what would you decide? Would you do it all again? I feel like half would say yes and half would say no. What would you say? I like to live my life by saying I have no regrets because it's led me to where I'm at today. And if it wasn't for us going through- I hate when people say that because (laughs) you can still have regrets and you can still learn from your mistakes. It's not one or the other. You can, but if certain life experiences wouldn't have happened like if certain things wouldn't have happened in your life you wouldn't have met your wife or like your soon-to-be life yeah like i look at it and i'm like if certain life experiences wouldn't have happened i wouldn't have met this person that person i wouldn't be able to potentially be a voice if my plan goes 
as planned. I wouldn't have been able to be a voice for millions of people and potentially make change that's forever lasting. No, I get that. And I get, I'm a big believer. Like I look back on some of the lowest moments of my life and I can look back on those moments with a smile now because I've learned and I've grown and I'm I'm not not as emotionally involved in those moments anymore. But again, I could still have regrets, you know, because me saying, well, I regret doing that and I wouldn't do it again if I was in that situation still doesn't like change I know. I think where I'm for at. Me, it's not like it's like Back to the Future. And if I say I have a regret, I get like my family gets like you know how in Back to the Future if they change like the time continuum, yeah. someone disappears because yes. they weren't they don't exist anymore. Yes. Like that doesn't happen. No. If you say you have a regret. No, I think for me, like definitely, if we wouldn't have been on TV, this whole legal issue wouldn't be an issue. One hundred and ten percent, without a doubt, wouldn't be a thing. So when you look at it from that perspective, sure. But then I look at it and I'm like, at all the blessings that have come along the way, I don't know. Who do you think of your family would regret it? I don't know. Probably mom and dad. Okay. Yeah, probably mom and dad because they're the ones now suffering from it. I guess it's easy. I mean, I'm suffering in a way, like I'm 26 years old and have two kids now, but like. Okay. But also I look at that and I'm like, this is the greatest blessing. Like having the two of them and like it's the hardest, most rewarding job I'll ever have. But it's like the greatest blessing in the world. How has it changed you? It's definitely made me softer because I'm very much, I think just through trauma I've gone through in life, like I've been very hardened and I'm just like, all right, you get up, you put a smile on your face, you keep going forward. This is what we do. So I definitely think it's made me softer. It's helped me with my communication skills. It's not everyone's the same. You have to learn how to speak to a 10 year old and then a 17 year old. and there's a lot of different paths you have to go down. Okay. What was something or what was one of the most surprising things or how many surprising things, but what surprised you the most when you went on special forces other than like just realizing just how fantastic I am? Yeah. I mean, you were fantastic. Yeah, you were great. Sure. At yeah. first I went in, like I was a little salty about the podcast towards you. Cause I was like salty about the podcast. I was like, <laughs> he turned my podcast down. Like, I don't like Actually, him. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm keeping my distance. But then no, I think I can talk about it because it was like on the promo of me puking. So <laughs> going they didn't down. show half the amount of puke that came <laughs> no. out. Yeah. No. And the poor guy at the bottom. Bodie? No. Oh, the, the, pulling... the spotter? Yes. Did you get any puke at him? I mean, I puked till the end. Yeah, you puked a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then I puked like all over me. Yeah. And I had to, of course, like we had to wear the same clothes. So I remember having to like try to wash my fleece and whatever I was given. I was surprised I was able to do the things I did. Yeah, it was truly. Uh, were the you food? surprised how the food? Oh, oh my, my god. god! I remember Nick. <sighs> <sighs> you. That was the, I, dude, that was the hardest part for me, dude. Easily the, the hardest part was the I fucking would, food. The chicken and water. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's giving me. There was a moment. We just poured salt on everything. There was a moment I threw up breakfast in my mouth and then swallowed it uh, because <laughs> I, I needed the nutrients. True story. Literally. Like I stood up to like throw up and then like brought it back down. But who was it? Des? Didn't Des like throw up everything that night? You remember when, you, when we had to do like the whole workout thing? Yeah, the thing? first night, yeah. And he threw up everything and I remember... He comes in because he has his beard on. And I'm like, dude, I can see puke in your beard. Like, (laughs) this is. Meanwhile, Tom Sandoval, I don't know if you know this, but he was a human garbage disposal. Motherfucker (laughs) would eat anything. Dude, And just like enjoy it. Can I have that puke? He'd be like, "Mm, this is so good. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? This is not. I mean, I I honestly wish I I could eat like Tom Sandoval. I'm I'm unfortunately a a snob when it comes to the. You food I put in my body at this point in my life. It was it was so bad. I remember what. Well, they just wait, deliberately made like, it look unpleasant. It was, you don't it like mayo. Meat. You don't like mayo, I can't right? Stand mayo, no. Yeah. So we were in the back of a car, and they're like, "Throw these sandwiches at us!" And they're like, "Here you go." And just this one over mayo. here, I remember we're all like starving because the dinners are terrible. It's like chicken water and rice. And they throw these sandwiches and he's like, does this have mayo on it? Oh, I don't eat mayo. And he's like trying to rub it all off. And we're just, me and Kelly 
are like just shoveling it in. We're like, thank God for something. I was eating around it, like nibbling on the bread. Literally. Yeah. Literally. I can't eat mayo. So you said our cast was great, except for who didn't you love? <sighs> no, I just Talk think- some shit. <laughs> Everyone connected, like everyone yeah. connected really well. We all had different conversations and like there was a lot of growth to be had through like agreeing and disagreeing and all like everything was so respectful. And then Angela, who was formerly Black China, was just not the kindest human being. Do you remember were we in the car together the first day? Yes. You know, and remember, on the way down when we yes, started, the whole, when the whole thing started, the whole thing started. And we're all like cutting up, laughing, talking. And she turns around and goes, could you quiet it down? And just like looks out the window and we all just like looked at each other like, what is happening? I liked her. She was nice. as like, I'm still like in the middle of the road. She was a bit, she, 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 I saw her promo. She was trying to work on her temper. Like that's what she said. Which, okay. after meeting her, I was like, okay, that makes yeah, sense. That yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Because, yeah. like, middle of the road, like, there were times to where she was super sweet, and then other times where I'm like, yeah, no. She did yell at Brian. Yeah, she did. And we all were While like- While reminding him that she's from D.C. <laughs> that did happen. She, ba- she said, don't mess with me, I'm from D.C. And she said it three or four times. And I was like, I am not sure what you're trying to imply <laughs> I've there. I've never heard that about someone <laughs> yes. from D.C. But she did- <laughs> say several times i'm from dc I'm, don't mess with me i'm from dc yes what i was like okay <laughs> like we all would sit here and we'd be like what and then poor jojo jojo tried to make the best of everything jojo and, like, is uh, such a cheerleader in the best such possible a cheerleader. Way. she'd be like all right let's go guys let's go guys it's fine let's just go let's it's go. fine it's fine come i'm on. just like dying tired and jojo's like come on guys let's go let's have some fun <laughs> Yes. Like, fuck <laughs> dude that was the best like she made the whole she thing never I ran was out like, energy it was unbelievable it was great but also like getting undressed in front of everyone i was like i don't know what i'm supposed to think of this i don't think anyone everyone just looked at the ground i did not <laughs> <laughs> i was looking around <laughs> well no one got naked no one got naked but like when tyler showered i was like oh god no, we get like, it you want to fuck tyler no <laughs> No, but like I definitely like you don't. No, I mean I wouldn't. Question: uh, Are you lying? <laughs> like <laughs> what? No, I mean like I don't know. He's a specimen. He's hot. But like he's hot. But like I definitely looked around. I was like, okay, like who are these people? Like Brian looked good for an older guy. Looked great for an old guy. I didn't look. Okay, he looked good. Not even at Tyler in the shower. Dude, literally, okay. First of all, first that. Off, two, imagine having to shit you in can't... front of Tyler. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That's all I, that's all I remember I is myself like home. hearing everyone's little squirty poops. <laughs> Dude, squirty the poops. The whole thing was bad. <laughs> oh. Like you had to have a, like a partner to go with you to even go to the bathroom. And of course, Tyler was my partner one time to like go to the bathroom and go shower. And I remember he was like standing outside the shower so respectfully with his back towards me. And I was like hurrying. I'm like trying to figure out how to. It was just bad. It was freezing. It was freezing. Well, didn't Jojo like coach you up to go to the bathroom? Well, I was, you know, I was a bit uh, shy. I was more like just stuck. Mm. <laughs> Um, Dude, everyone was. There that was a moment where was like, JoJo was giving me some positive affirmations and some like, it's okay, just relax. I'm here. Take your time. Because <laughs> there's a lot of pre- cause every, 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 everything was like, get hurry up and go. You yeah. know, there was just no time. And I didn't run on, get caught with literally my pants down when the when the fucking like um, DS like DS come out were being like regrets. You know, and I'm like I just that was a nightmare. So. Dude, and they were no joke. Like No joke, they were fucked. That one night where we had to work out. Could you be more specific? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like every day. Yeah. We literally, remember, we were like on our knees, like walking. The first night, the boulders? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they're like, come on, get heavier. And I'm like, guys, this is like a bit like, okay. Like, I respect you and what you do, but like. what is the mo- Was it the most difficult thing you've ever done? The whole special forces thing? Yeah. I mean, physically, yeah. Are you glad you did it? I'm so glad I did it. Because you meet so many fun people. You get to interact with people. Just relationships you make with people. I'm like, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I'm in a place in life of like not saying no. Uh, Where do things stand 
with you and your sister Lindsay? Um, Are you still blocked? Am I still blocked? I don't think so. I don't know. Should we look? Let's see. Here we go. Oh, no, I'm not blocked anymore. You're not blocked. Okay. I'm not blocked. That's actually the first time I've looked from like my real account. I, I don't know anything about your sister. I, do, I will say people who block and unblock are drama queens. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. in general. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you're doing whole, it for the drama. My whole motto is, is like, I want you to see how great my life is. I have a question. This just popped in my head. I don't know if it's your sister, Lindsay, or if it's you, because I, I don't, I didn't watch your show. You got it confused. I just don't. I, I, I you know about out. before Honestly, I got to, before I got to meet Kristen you. Kristen knows best, like kept our family together. Thank so, you. So it was a mutual love. Before Thank I got you. to know mm-hmm. you on special forces and really okay. enjoyed meeting you, you seem like a wonderful person. Thank you, um, Nick. I certainly knew of you. I yes. knew of your family. You know, you guys are super famous, but I'll I just it. didn't really know how many Chrisleys they were. Oh, they were. just keep coming. But I do remember hearing uh, a few years back of one of the Chrisleys hooking up with some Bachelor Nation boys, specifically like Josh Murray and Robbie something. Was that? Not me. Okay. Not me. My thing. No offense. No offense before I what say what I'm about to say, but like, I don't care to F around with Bachelor guys. Bachelorette guys, you know? You're more A-list. Go back or go home. <laughs> <laughs> I just, my thing is, it's Except like- Except for, would you make an exception for Tyler? I mean, I make an exception for Tyler. Okay. Yeah, you know, whatever. But no, that was not me. I had nothing to do with that. I was not part of that whole thing. But it's thing. Your, more, your less likable sister that's fucking around with the reality TV trash. I'm asking. That's you a question. Said it. No, it's an a, it's a question. It wasn't me. But where do things stand with you and your sister? Are you guys now that you're unblocked? No. Just no. No. Just no. What? I mean, we just don't speak. What's wrong? What happened? Um. I don't know anything, so I apologize. Okay. Well. Now I'm gonna sound like I sound like Howie Mandel. Yeah. Right. Should have uh, done your research. <laughs> Pull up court transcripts, my friend. I just don't know about that trauma. It's really difficult because she and my oldest brother are from my dad's first marriage. My mom always treated them as if they were hers. They didn't necessarily treat her the same. Okay. Um, and then so Lindsay is a half sister. Yes. Okay. And she was very heavily involved in my parents' court case with working with the government. Do you think she she, she stabbed a family in the back? Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that for anything other than factual purposes. Like she lives her life, I live mine. We don't communicate. As an adult, you have to create healthy boundaries and you have certain people in your life and certain people out of your life. And just because your family doesn't mean you're allowed access into certain areas of my life. And that's where we're at. And she's your dad's daughter. Yeah. Did she testify against dad? In the court transcripts, it was said that she had worked with the government for two years. But during trial, she certain things she said was like, hey, what the government's saying is not accurate. What I just think she got herself in a mess that she tried to find her way out of that was a difficult way to find your way out of. Do you think there's any hope for reconciliation between you and Lindsay and Lindsay and the rest of the family? I don't know. I think what would it take? I think it's hard because at the end of the day, like if she ever needed anything, I would be there. Like I would show up and I would do what I needed to do in order to help her and provide her with whatever help she needed and her son and whatever. But when it comes to personal life and information and experiences, I just don't think I could ever get to a place of trusting her with that just because now I'm left without two parents. And she did help to contribute to it. That's fair. I mean, there's Um, I have siblings I don't necessarily trust and. Yeah. They didn't testify against my mom and dad. So yeah. I guess there's. So it's it's a really tough, nasty dynamic that like I'm like, it's literally a lifetime movie. Like someone should have written this shit. Maybe they will. <laughs> oh, trust me. They've Who tried. would you want to play you? Who would I want to play me? Oh, my gosh. That's a good one. Who would we say? Tyler, who would you say? <laughs> I you you're, know and me. I want Tyler to play me. No, Tyler. No, like this is not Tyler Cameron. And for this everyone, is Tyler, Tyler like, your your stylist. Yes, yes. Is it stylist or your hair makeup stylist. artist? Hairstylist. Hairstylist. Oh, mm. Margot Robbie would be a good one. I mean, I'd let Margot Robbie play me. Also, too, whoever plays She'd Beth in job. Yellowstone. Uh, Beth. Beth. Yes. Yes, Beth. I have a friend who's like always tells me like, "Hey, Beth, let's put the crazy away." So like. That would be good. Do you think you're crazy? No, not at all. I just say it like 
I'm very firm in what I believe in and what I stand for and whatever. So like if I feel something, you're going to know I feel it. What's something about yourself that you'd like to work on? Oh, what I would like to work on. Figuring out how to express my opinions and beliefs, maybe in a little bit more of a respectful manner. Okay. And realizing that what I believe isn't what everyone believes and what I believe is based off my own life experience. Well, I mean, hell, I wish the rest of the world could take that advice. Too. <laughs> uh, other than obsessing over Tyler Cameron and dating A-list celebrities, <laughs> what's going on in your love life? My love life? Oh, my goodness. Oh. We're a relationship podcast, Savannah. We must get into oh it. Oh, my gosh. Well, the Don't Text Your Ex Happy Birthday by Nick Vile, like, I should take that. Well, you're welcome to it. Advice. Yeah. Because um, I definitely text every ex and happy birthday just to be toxic. Um, as long as you know. Yeah, right? As long as you're willing to admit that you love making their day about you. <laughs> that is great. Um, 100%. I'm like, you've completely screwed up my life, so I'm going to make your day about me. Love life is difficult because, like, I have two kids now. Yeah, I imagine. So if you date me, like, you date all of us. Um, now that's not to say there isn't anyone, but are you currently dating? Maybe. What sport do they play? For the first time in my life, they don't play a sport. They don't play a sport. I only say that because I remember you on Special Forces, you were talking about a, a lot of athletes. I know. I dated a basketball player that like. I think there was a around, hockey player somewhere in there hockey too. Hockey player engaged to a hockey player. Okay. And then, yeah, this is like a normal person. Not in any public. No, not in, well, kind of, but like not for the good reasons. (laughs) (laughs) A project. Like, fun. (laughs) Like, I don't know. Like, there was just some stories surrounding this person due to their marriage. And are they married? No, they're not married. Well, they're in the. Is it Kevin Costner? Uh, Dude, I wish. You have no idea how many times I've spoken about Kevin Costner on my podcast. Are you the reason she had to move to the pool house? (laughs) Dude, also, I think I was sitting next to, like, okay, so this is just going to show. I'm, like, a creep. And so on my flight out to L.A., there's the first row on Delta, then the second row. I'm on the window seat. Then the person on the first aisle seat was either... Kevin Costner's wife's boyfriend or a publicist because his writing on his phone was so big and I couldn't help but read it, guys. Like, I could not help but read it. What did it say? They were talking about Kevin and the divorce and how she needed to get like a forensic person involved in the accounting. Wait, you were had a front row seat to the divorce drama that is going on between Kev? Front row. I was engulfed. I was like, I have to try to read every message that's going down right so now. So what, what did it say? Well, just they had to get a forensic person involved to like go through all of his businesses and stuff. But did the did the tone of the message seem like they were trying to get Kevin or do you feel like the tone I mean, of the message? I mean, probably. And he just had her in his, because what's her name? Her name's Christine, right? Christine Baumgartner? Yeah, Christine. So in the contacts, it was just Christine. It didn't have a last name. And this guy was chowing down on a salad. I've never seen someone like eat a Delta salad one? like so aggressively. Like I've never seen him eat a salad like someone so aggressively in my life. But it was Christine. It didn't have a last name, anything. But I know it was like talking about Kevin. It was the guy looked familiar. I'm pretty sure it was the boyfriend. The guy the she went to Hawaii. Friend. The guy she the, went to Hawaii yes, with. Yes. Bring it up. Bring up that picture. I'm telling you. I'm well, almost we're, 95% We're going to get you to sure. confirm right now. This is like a, like a, what do they call it? A lineup? 95% <laughs> sure. This could be my shot with Kevin, okay? Kevin, if you're out there. <laughs> but no, this guy that like I'm talking to, like his wife just tried to kill him. It's fine. <laughs> his wife just tried to kill him? <laughs> you Google that. I'm Google, finding this you, you Google that. There's so many stories of wives trying to kill their husbands. <laughs> so well, there's that one, the one lady who went to, to, uh, to fucking Auburn and he played football. <laughs> Dude, there's so many. Lindsay Shiver and Robert Shiver. Yeah, there we go. Is was that him? Was that the guy on the plane? Dude, I'm almost. <sighs> I don't know. Those... And so he was wearing a mask. And you can't see his eyes there. No you see the sunglasses in that picture. No. Did he have a beard? But it, he had Anyways, a beard. Your but it current was more... boyfriend is a survivor of a murder attempt. It was a thing. Who is attempting to kill who? I don't know. I don't know. But so he's a normie. Knows? He's a normal person, who, and I love it. Whose wife tried to kill? Is it the guy from Auburn? No. Did he go to Auburn? 
I don't know where he went to school. <laughs> Bring up the Auburn guy. Here we go. I'm sweating. I am sweating. Is that him? Is that him? No. You wouldn't date him. That's an old photo. That's him? No! <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's an old photo? Is that him? Savannah. Are you dating him? This man? <laughs> Are you dating him? No. Dude, I'm... I'm... Dating. Him. <laughs> I've got options. Have you spoken to that man? What's his name? Robert Shiver. Shiver. Oh my God. <laughs> Have you met the wife? <laughs> Don't. Is she going to try and kill you? I care too much about Savannah's safety. <laughs> I'm scared for you. She tried to kill him. She's trying to kill him. Well, isn't want she them behind to bars? Did you br update me on the news? I don't know. <laughs> Shy, Guys, That's this not a is question. hilarious. You have a full blown. This is amazing. Our screen built into a desk is what's blowing your mind. Oh, not dude, the fact it is. that you're this is like so high profile. How did I need you meet this guy? Game. Well, she said the key to a perfect marriage is having two imperfect people who refuse to give up on each other. So thankfully for that fitness class 13 years ago that brought us together. Did you? How'd you meet him? Are you fucking with us? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. The truth. <laughs> I mean, oh God. Thank she knew God. how to pronounce his last name. I will say that. That came out real fast. <laughs> What's his middle name? I don't know. Uh, Lindsay Shiver breaks silence. Release from the Bahamas. Bahamas jail. She tried to kill him in the Bahamas. Okay, she's on house arrest. You no. do know a lot. <laughs> okay, okay. And who is this man? We so, don't did even you slide know. into his DMs too? I like the DMs. I, listen, Dude, he was I, that's too how hot I met to die. That's how I met. <laughs> that's how I met uh, Natalie. Did you? She slid, you in my slid DMs. into the DM. No, she slid into mine. She's like, okay. See, I like that. There's. But Savannah, can we get a if, recent picture of your boyfriend? What if she comes after you? Aren't no, you worried? No. Dude, I have dealt. I have had the government come after me. But I'm this woman, good. Lindsay Shiver, is nothing compared to the government. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her! Look at her go! Oh, sh oh! What's that Manila envelope for? Hey, so she guys. hired a, a, oh, a yeah, hitman. The ankle bracelet. The ankle I bracelet. don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, you're innocent until proven guilty. So we'll go with that. But even in, when you're proven, I what mean, is your? What does he think? Is that him? Oh my! <laughs> oh my does he god! Look better? He goes. Oh my god! Well, I can't look past the sleeveless shirt. <laughs> oh. He is way more handsome in this picture. Okay, I gotta update Google. <laughs> I can't see that. What's happening on the ground? And in good spirits. Give, give, What's he doing? Changing a tire? Given he's almost been murdered. <laughs> Who took a picture? Why'd you take a picture? Does, it, does he have tire? a new found lease on life? <laughs> I just choked. Uh, How did you meet this guy? What is this man doing in a house? Oh, God. Guys, Why is he out of fence? Dude, literally, like, they're literally daily mail. At his, see, look. Look how good he looks there. It's a glow up. It's a post-attempted murder glow up. <laughs> Good to oh, know. God. He's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start dressing well now. Dear God, you're welcome, Nick. Your ratings are just going to fucking skyrocket. How did you meet him? Instagram. Who slid? Me. Good but you. how did you find him on Instagram? These Dude, headlines? You, yeah. And you're like, so that you man. So you saw the headline. You're like, wow, he's hot. I'll find him on Instagram and say, hey, yo, I'm but more he only sane got than your ex. Yeah. You saw the potential? I mean, like, look. The picture with why his kids. He, trying, he was so good looking. Why was he? She he looks. To kill I will, him? He does. He looks hot in that photo you sent me. Yeah. He looks hot. See. Yeah. Yeah. And I've had some. I have some bad pictures out there. Uh, see, we all have bad pictures out there. Why did the wife want to kill him? I mean, I don't know. I'm not. I like to say I will never. <laughs> Dude, what is that? You look like the like like uh what's that? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. An Oompa Loompa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But look at this one, Nick. Look at you, so modely. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. See, we all have bad pet photos. Don't even go for mine. Shit, pre-nose job, it was bad. Have you defined the relationship yet? I mean, it's not, we're like friends, like getting to know each other. First base, second base, third base, <laughs> how many bases? How many bases? We're getting to know each other. I mean, he's like a really sweet human being War actually maybe Eagle. this is perfect because if you War both Eagle. are dueling like the the single parent situation you can lean on each other and too you realize like your kids come first yeah. and then everyone else comes after the mutual it's great understanding i'm blown away
I am blown away. <laughs> blown. Who would have thought? This Nick. is like the it attempted murder couple. <laughs> well, we know she loves an A-lister. There's so many. What's she going to do? Some random small town wannabe criminal? Does he think she tried to murder him? I don't know. I like to say, like, I will never speak on it because there's kids involved. So my <laughs> I love respect... how you say, I'd like to say I'd never speak on it. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, I don't speak on it. <laughs> No, I just have so much respect for, I know how it feels as a kid. So like, I just have so much respect for them gotcha. that I would never say like, this is what happened. That's what happened. Like, that's for them to talk about when they're ready to talk about it. When's your next date? Okay. Is he here? He was. We bamboozled TMZ. Got us at the damn airport. We're coming down the escalator and the I go, I see the TMZ and I'm like, I was like, go straight. I'll go right. And he goes straight and the TMZ guy was like, so like, who was the guy behind you? And I was like, I don't know, like somebody I met on the plane. He was like, looks like you were together. I was like, I'm always trying to make something out of nothing. And then like kept going on about it. Then the TMZ guy kept saying, like, want me to get his number for you? Like, you looked like you were interested, like all these things. And I was like, no, like, I'm good. And he didn't know who that guy was? No. He's not doing his job. And then, please, I have a video. Of his fucking ass, six two, getting in the floorboard of the car, cause the TMZ guy. <laughs> Stop. Can we play it? <laughs> Please look at this. He's, He's literally lying in the back seat of a car. Lying in the back seat of a car. This was such a great podcast for you. It was fun. <laughs> Hopefully, it was fun for everyone. Hey, I. This is the most fun I've had. Thank you. We should like do a podcast and like co-host it together. We could have a lot of fun. a live show. Dude, we could do like a live show between the two of us. It would be fun. It would sell itself. It would. We'd be a great duo. Like you're like a little dry, you know, and I'm like a little out there. So it'd be great. Okay. But I'm going to first do it with my fiance. Hey, I love her too. I know. She's gorgeous. Yeah. She really is. Yeah. Like she's, you guys are so cute. She's the best. Awesome. Uh, When am I going to do your, your podcast? Well, whenever you actually accept it I'll and actually my, I'll, say I'll, I'll you'll do it. I'll text my team now. Okay. And then. Make your ass to Nashville. Or I can come out here because okay. JoJo is going to do it. So maybe I'll come out here and do one. Get it, yeah, do a look at mashup. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You can even use a studio. Can I? To do mine. Not everyone's. <laughs> so well, I, I just like, I mean, I'd love. She repaints the wall back there. <laughs> repaints the wall. I, mean, I just can't like, maybe. Give me a we'll call. We'll talk. Yeah. If I, if I can help, I will. Okay. Even, I appreciate yeah. it. What else do we need to ask about this? I mean, truly, how do we get any better than what we just did? <laughs> yeah. Man. Dude, I'm mind blown. Are you guys going to watch Special Forces together? I'm actually, they're doing like a preview at the military base outside of Nashville. Really? Yeah. Like on the 21st. And they were like, will you come? I was like, heck yeah. You should do that. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. Who knows? He may be in attendance. He may not. What's your favorite thing about him? I think just the connection. How does he And get his it? heart and the ability to like listen and understand and communicate. Has he gotten in your nerves so much that you just wanted to kill him? Ever? <laughs> Dude, I've had to watch myself. The other day, I've like sent in a text. I was like, I'm going to kill you. And he was like, oh. <laughs> Too soon. I was like, I can't say that. Too soon. Too soon. Can't say that. Um, Nothing gets on my nerves. Which is like a shock because like everything gets on my nerves. I'm just impressed with this glow up. It's really How long something. have you guys been seeing each other? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Have the kids you've already met? You've already put it out there. Let's not go cryptic now. <laughs> it's else? very, very new. Very, very new. Very okay. new. Just the like, fact that you've spoken to him is truly... Dude, I feel like you had an idea, which is why you touched on I it. truly didn't. I was like, we, it's a relationship podcast, Savannah. We lost, ask everyone, so what the are you doing? The first How? person you guessed is a guy from freaking Auburn that almost gets off. You're the one who said he's- You gave us a lot of clues. You gave us a lot of clues, he's, and he's they are- guess Auburn, because Natalie- Natalie's is, from, yeah. Natalie's from no. Auburn. How old is she? She's 25. Okay, so they wouldn't know each other. No. And they are like the it, you know, attempted murder couple. <laughs> Does so, this have to air? Can we lose this file? We'd rather it not. <laughs> but, you know. I love you. Hey, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're just going to keep If moving. you're going to come out, come out on here. Right? Why yeah. not do it on my own fucking podcast? Unlocked. <laughs> yeah, plug away. Please plug, yeah, plug all your, your podcast. Projects, right? <laughs> you're a realtor. You have a it's beauty more, line. It's Thank more, you. I will say breaking news gets more 
clout on other people's shows than your own yeah, for some reason. It does. It does. I don't, you it's know, weird. Yeah. But also, too, you like, were, there was no way for me to hide anything. I'm a master interviewer. You are. <laughs> I don't know. I would pay you good money for this. Uh, For what? Like, to be like, if I had like a network, I'd be like, oh, I want him to interview for me. Okay. Thanks for the plug. I'm just saying. Yeah. We work really hard on this show. You do. They're great, by they the are. way. Yeah. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. This was the most fun I've had, and I can't tell you when. You're a master interviewer. I don't know how you do what you do. Thank but you. I'm so happy to have done Special Forces because I got to meet people like you. Like and what? hey, even though you turned on my podcast, it's fine. I, I did not turn down your podcast. I forgive I you. I swear to God. I forgive you, but I'm taking a don't text your ex happy birthday book home. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure getting to know you on Special Forces. It, it's a bummer we can't like talk more about it. You know, I know. Obviously, because we don't want to give anything away. But I hope the people watch. Me too. It's going to uh, be fun. Savannah throws up a lot. <laughs> I just remember looking up and just going... Ugh! I didn't stop. And I kept, all I could think of is that's going to make the promo. <laughs> Literally, I did not stop the whole way down. Well, it's just kind of pulling on your guts. It was. Yeah. It was brutal. But you know what? Do you know what you're doing wrong? No. Yeah. I was the first one to go. I know. That sucked. I definitely benefited a few times from going last because that was the thing I was shocked the most about doing that show is like, I remember watching season one and all the crazy shit they'd have us do, right? Yeah. And I watched season one and I, you know, having done tv before and like on the bachelor if you do anything kind of dangerous they have like a safety meeting and you know it's like a couple hours and i'm watching it being like there's just no way they're just gonna like we're gonna show up and they're gonna go all right do this it shit here's a 20 second tutorial and that's exactly what that's they exactly did. what they did like no instructions they're like all right uh walk down this cliff uh <laughs> do x y and z and you're like Okay, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I did benefit. So like all you could do is literally just like watch other people before you go yeah. and try to figure it out. And I just was like, all right, let's go face first down this and hope for the best. And like you would have thought you would have like gone flying. What you did wrong is you tried to walk down the wall. And I say that no because shit. it sounds so like counterintuitive that you had to like thrust your hips forward. Yeah. <laughs> and focus on that rather than walk down. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. Um, but you tried to like you were you were you were thinking walk down, yeah. so you bent your hips and yeah. piked, and that's and then, I was and screwed. It, yeah, it it hurt. Yeah, it and looked then like it Des. hurt. Des, Des, wow. oh poor guy. It was a tough beat. Tough beat. It, uh, it that he's not going to be here tomorrow. He's not. No, he's not which is sad. He wasn't on the list. He had a bad experience. <laughs> He had a bad experience. Yeah. My experience with him, though, was great. Oh, I loved Des. Yeah. Loved him. Like, oh. even after the show, we, like, sat down and ate and had lunch, and I was, like, freaking awesome oh, human. really, really great guy. Yeah. yeah. He was my bunk. We, we, well, he was next to me. Dude, my favorite was having Robert Ori as my, like, next door neighbor in the bed, and I'm, like, this seven-foot guy laying next to me. His bed creaked every time he moved. But like at night we would lay there and like have super in-depth conversations. Robert, great guy. Fantastic. Great guy. guy. Yeah. My heart like goes out to him. He's just world class. Just that yeah. whole experience, what he went through. Like I had so much respect for him. Yeah, like he's, he's just an, he's like my partner for the press tomorrow. Oh, no, he's such a great guy. I'm like so excited. I'm like, I can't wait to hug you. You uh, you met Tom Sandoval. He's obviously yep. the topic of, of, of many discussions. Oh my God, the topic of many, okay. What was your read on Tom? My thing was, I'm not trying to be cool when I say this, but like I didn't watch the show. We did. Okay. So can someone give me a lowdown? All I know is that he slept with the other girl. He cheated his... on his long term partner behind her back for several months and like, essentially but lied about it. In their house, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Behind the back. Like that's my thing. Like it's one thing to cheat on him, but like it's a dirty thing in like your At house. one point, I believe it was one of the first times they hooked up. Uh, Ariana, his girlfriend of 10 years, uh, her grandmother passed away. So she had to fly out of L.A. And then they had sex while she was like mourning with her family. Yeah, it wasn't a great thing. But I'm curious what I mean, you met Tom. I'm just curious because everyone has so many opinions uh, about Very Tom. Odd. So I just want to know what you think about Tom. He was nice. He was definitely nice. But I was like, this is just an odd, oddball. Like just an odd. And too, like. What, I knew what, what what gave you the impression? What didn't give me the impression? I'm just asking. 
I don't just, just the way he spoke sometimes. I was like, what are you even saying? There was a bit of that sometimes. Yeah, like what's even coming out of your mouth? Like I don't know if that even makes sense. And then like taping up all of his fingers and stuff. I'm like, why the fuck are you taping up your fingers, dude? Like what is happening? And then the whole him like sleeping around on his girlfriend in the same house. I was like, that's gross. But also, he's not like this like heartthrob. You know what I mean? Like people <laughs> He's not the Tyler Cameron of the group. No, he's not the Tyler Cameron of the group. Like he's not this heartthrob. Like he's not Kevin Costner, okay? To where everyone's like, I would sleep with he's him. He's not your type. No. He it's like n- not everyone's like, oh my God, I'd sleep with him. So you're like, there's two girls actually fighting over this dude. Well, and get okay, this, but like the I mean, way that he's objective, met, he's a, way that he's a, he's he met his girlfriend guy. was cheating on his then girlfriend at the time. He's done this multiple hey, times. How you meet him is how you leave him. But you met your current boyfriend. Well, his wife was trying to kill him. <laughs> how you meet him, that, you do, leave that him. doesn't bode well for you. Okay. Um, don't anyway. text your ex happy she's birthday. She's pretty sure that's how she's we're gonna end on this murder's one. not in her blood. No, murder. I could never, guys. That's just too mm-hmm. like, hey, I love myself too much for that. Like, I would not bode well in prison. Trust me, after seeing all these things, I would not bode well. How does your current boyfriend make you feel okay. loved? Why are we saying boyfriend first? How off? is your current fling? What's your favorite thing about him? I don't get annoyed by anything. Oh, I thought that was just in general. No, with him. Like, I get oh. annoyed by everything in life. Oh, he does. Okay. Like, Tyler, my hairdresser, could, like, snore, and I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, wake the hell up. Wait till I fall asleep to fall asleep. But, like, said fling could, like, snore, and I'd be like, oh, my God, that's so cute. Do we know why she tried to kill him? That's why I was asking Savannah, but no one heard me. Sorry. I don't. There's been a lot of chaos. I don't. <laughs> here in the past 20 minutes. I don't think anyone really knows the story. I just know there was an extramarital affair that had happened and then all these different things. Not on his part. Not on his part. But there was all these different things that happened and I don't know. Somehow it ended in what it ended in. Yeah. Lindsay's alleged lover became a suspect in an unrelated burglary. Unrelated. (sighs) Nuts. Down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole. But thank you for having me. Savannah, Nick. it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming. Can't wait to do your podcast. Please thank plug you. away your podcast, all the other great things that you're doing. Thank you. You're awesome. Likewise. And plug. yes, so my podcast, Unlocked with Savannah, comes out every Tuesday. So this will be fun because this comes out on, yeah, Tuesday, on Tuesday, right? Yeah. So super go excited ahead. about it's, that. Go ahead and check out Savannah's podcast right now. All right. Great. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.